Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the BMAX B2. This is a mini PC running on Windows 10 that sells for under 200 bucks, sometimes goes on sale for as low as 180, and it offers decent specs for that budget price. It has 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM along with 128 gigs of solid state drive, supports two HDMI ports which can connect to two monitors at once, offering up to 4K resolution, also has dual band 2.4 4G and 5G Wi-Fi. I think in particular the design as well as the 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM is what sets it apart at this price. However, the processor is still going to be relatively entry level. It's using a Celeron N3450 chip, which we have seen in past products. It's 14 nanometers and offers turbo speed up to 2.2 gigahertz. So it can be even mounted onto the back of say TVs and just be hidden from view if you don't need something ultra powerful. Now there's a slightly upgraded version called the B2 Plus, uh, which has a slightly faster processor up to 2.5 gigahertz, but packs the same RAM and built-in memory. The computer does also support 2.5 inch SATA drives, so you can supplement a hard drive, something to expand on the built-in storage. We also get some mounting adapters if you want to pop this again onto a uh, TV or onto the wall. There's also a quick instruction manual, and there is a free bundled HDMI cable. You also get access to the power adapter, so pretty simple and straightforward. It uses a round plug. Now by default, there is a screen protector on top of the surface of the mini PC, which we can peel off. Uh, it is a very shiny surface, as you can see there. I like the fact that these mini PCs and also Android TV boxes have been getting just more and more attractive in terms of design throughout the past few generations. Here's a size comparison with an iPhone that has a 4.7 inch display. You can see that it's actually not considerably larger, uh, so this thing really is quite compact. Taking a closer look, the body here is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic, and along the sides we have ventilation grills. There is a micro SD card slot, and on the front here we have access to a 3.5mm audio jack, two USB 3.0 ports, dedicated power on and off key which is backlit, and then additional ventilation ports for air to flow through. And then on the back is where we have the aforementioned dual HDMI ports. We have two more USB 2.0 ports for a total of four on this box if you don't want to expand on it further. There's also an Ethernet port for wired internet if you don't want to use the built-in Wi-Fi. Finally, there's the power port, and the bottom here just features some rubber feet to prevent it from sliding around. Overall, it's a straightforward but pretty cool design. If anything though, the front surface does attract fingerprints and smudges pretty easily, although it is quite easy to also just wipe off. So that's as loud as this computer gets when it's uh, handling more intensive tasks, so there is indeed a small fan in the background. It's as quiet as a small Pico projector, I'd say. Uh, almost silent. Now, in terms of the Power on time, a clean boot takes about 20 seconds to get into the Windows 10 Pro operating system. Afterwards, we're presented to the desktop. It's a very clean install of the OS. There's no really any freeware or bloatware built on in. There's not even built in uh, Office, for example. Although you can always opt for alternatives such as Google Docs, OpenOffice, Notepad, something like that. Zooming in, there's about 90 gigs of free space after the operating system is installed, so not the most in the world, but it is still usable in most cases. You can always supplement it again by a hard drive or by an SD card. It is a 64-bit version of the software. It doesn't really lag when it comes to general navigation, as we can see there. still seems responsive enough when it comes to just moving around uh, these uh, main screens and opening different uh, files and whatnot up. That's also thanks to the SSD, solid state drive, as opposed to, say, a slower eMMC or if using a spinning hard drive. So overall speed is actually quite decent, I think, when it comes to things like uh, regular navigation, file managers, uh, dragging files around, things like that. When it comes to web browsing, the 8 gigs of RAM definitely helps keep things ticking along pretty smoothly. Even if we have multiple tabs here in the background, we have a handful, everything is still kept in the system's uh, RAM without reloading or refreshing as we jump back and forth between these relatively heavy sites. So that's 
definitely a plus of having, I would say, slightly more than the past few generations of cheaper mini PCs. Those tended to have just four gigs just a year or two ago, so this has been a good leap forward. The Wi-Fi reception also seems to be quite good for an integrated unit. It performs similar to other laptops and computers in the same price range. Right now we are a little further away from the router, which is actually located on the first story of this building, uh, but even across um, a different level and also passing through several walls, we're still getting a respectable speed for things like loading along various sites. As a general rule of thumb, I tried opening up between 15 to 20 tabs in the Chrome browser and things still felt pretty responsive. Uh, past that number though is when you'll notice a little bit more slowdowns, but overall pretty good. Of course, Chrome is known to be a bit more resource intensive than say uh, a comparable browser such as Microsoft's own Edge that tends to work even better. So if you want to, for some reason, open up beyond 20 tabs and still keep them running, that would be another option. So all in all, good amount of multitasking that you can juggle for open web pages. Now here's a view of some different types of content just as examples. Uh, I mentioned previously how there's other alternatives to office editing tools such as Google Docs um, that works perfectly fine here. Editing documents, uh, you know, doing some productivity is a perfect example of something that this computer handles very well without really any complaints. Same thing goes with Excel documents, getting some work done, no issues at all, fast read and write speeds, and uh, fast enough for handling uh, you know, these basic tasks without any problems. If we jump over to things like watching back videos, it's also a pretty good application. Streaming Netflix, doing some occasional entertainment, YouTube. Here's a video that's been loaded all the way up to 4K resolution. If we tap on play here, it still renders and plays back pretty smoothly. Um, and as long as you have decent enough internet, the buffering doesn't become an issue either. So overall, quite an impressive process, both for watching videos as well as for productivity and getting some work done. Let's just play back a few more seconds of this clip. Once again, things still are loading along very smoothly, even more so if you have a local file, uh, such as a 4K video that you have on an SD card or on the device's memory, it's going to be even better. In terms of the raw system performance, the, again, Celeron N3450 is a pretty tried and tested CPU we've been seeing for a while now. On past mark, it hits roughly 1913, which is a slight step above, say, an Intel Atom chipset, an X5 or an X7 series, but it's also not going to be, say, to the same extent as a Intel Core M series, for instance. It's a slight step below the M3 in performance, and obviously not as powerful as an Core i series, which is Intel's flagship line. So that's where you should look if you're trying to do things like intensive gaming or if you want to do more video editing, something that requires more demanding power versus this, which is still relatively energy efficient. At the same time, though, it's not that much worse than an older generation Core i5. Um, so in terms of the evolutions of these chipsets, uh, even though this is still pretty energy efficient, just through the years, they've already gone quite good. Other things that you can do include, of course, setting back images. You can do some light video and photo editing. It works all right for light tasks, but the rendering speed, so after you're done editing, you hit on export, that's where it takes a bit longer than on more powerful machines. Uh, for example, a HD video, which is about 10 minutes in length, will take about 15 to 20 minutes to fully ex export. Obviously, there's access to the Microsoft Store. This is, of course, a desktop legacy OS. You can install anything that you can find for Windows Online. And in particular, the store is where you can find some lighter titles or games which are more optimized for mobile platforms. And on something like this, it definitely still runs without any problems. It's just when you get into more newer AAA titles, that's where it starts to not be the best experience. Other applications that you can think about when using with this machine include some coding, anything that is slightly lighter if you're using Python, a uh, text editor, things like Jupyter Notebook, it's a great application. Yet another example of uh, productivity and work, which it can definitely handle. But all in all, really not bad for this budget price. Um, I would say, again, it has surprisingly stable performance, fast boot up times, thanks to that quick SSD. Things are quite stable in terms of navigation, file managing, 
doing some office editing and web browsing, it can actually handle very well thanks to that uh, a bit of extra RAM compared to other previous generation cheaper mini PCs. Video watching is also still enjoyable and the reception quality of the Wi-Fi is, is also quite good. So obviously it's not going to be a replacement for something crazy like a gaming PC, but for something so compact I think it has enough power that will get you by and all in all a pretty good value I'd say for a relatively entry level price. Final remark, I would say it does get a a little bit warm if you're doing heavier tasks after more than an hour or two on the very top portion that is, but it never gets hot. This is not a processor that really thermal throttles or anything like that. It still is very energy efficient and the built-in fan here definitely helps. So you can check out more details if interested in the links down below. For now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been our hands-on review of the BMAX B2 Mini PC.